Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Activities for People Living at Home with Dementia. My name is Martha Brown, and I am your volunteer with Dementia Friendly Fort Worth. We are proud to offer this series with funding from the Area Agency on Aging and the United Way of Tarrant County. These programs are recorded and are made available for viewing through a YouTube channel for future use. I am your host for today's activities. Our topic for today is love brought to you by Peggy Spear from the Eamon Carter Museum of American Art. I cannot wait to see what Peggy has in store for us. Peggy, yeah, Martha, Peggy. it should be coming to you from a corner of my bedroom to hide from my children today. We are not. <laughs> All right, let well, me share my screen. And if they come in, it's love, you know. They Morning. want to share their love with you. Right. Yes. Nothing but love. Morning, right, Janine and John. Morning. John's asleep, so it's just me today. Okie dokie. Glad to have you. All, All right. right. So oh. we're going to talk about love, but we're some of these are a reach for love, but just we'll get there together. <laughs> All right. So this is one of um, our first artworks we're going to look at. Does anyone remember what these are called? They're called uh, stereographs. 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 Right. So it, this is kind of a grainy one, but can you tell me what you see here? Looks like an ice cave. Yep. Mm -hmm. Or icicles and uh, uh -huh. some little, little uh, what do you call them, cupids holding a sign. Yes. Cupids. Oh, and God. can you read what the sign says? Do you guys need Your to read Your Valentine. It? for you know who. <laughs> so it's a bit of a secret admirer situation. Oh. So this is kind of a funny, you know, it's entitled February. So you've got kind of the two things you think about when you think of February, right? You've got your Valentine. Of course. You've also got that gross cold that we always called in our family growing up, February was always the dark side of winter. Like you, you just wanted to skate through the month of February, at least in our health. It was just, you wanted huh. it to be spring. So I feel like it's, it's kind of a funny, uh, or, uh, you know, the inclusion of what you think of with February. Does anyone uh -huh. else have, have that kind of view of February or does anyone have warmer thoughts of February? Uh, yeah, Valentine's uh, Day. <clears throat> Uh, and and it's down here. February is pretty. Is, today, today it's cold, but the, it's it's got more sunshine. Today yeah, we it, usually the starting to begin the spring. This yeah, artist, I, um, he was from I want to say New Hampshire. So cold. cold. I, I talked cold. to my brother cold. the other day right. New Hampshire. in North Dakota, and he says it's only twenty six degrees below zero. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh my goodness. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Where is he? He's in North Dakota. Oh, North Dakota. Yeah. So yeah, so he was he, this particular um, artist. There's not much known about him, but this uh, stereograph was about one and an estimated numbers around 400 he made in seven years from 19, or excuse me, 1871 to 18, um, 1878, somewhere around there. He made 400 of what these scenes were called sentimental scenes or allegoric scenes. So you could, and they were extremely popular. So he would release some of these around particular holidays. So for example, he had ones that were really, um, people really liked of Santa Claus coming out of the chimney or um, Jack Frost. It's something that looked like Jack Frost outside, like these kind of, sweet, sentimental, allegorical stories that everyone knew and he was able to kind of capture them into some sort of, you know, scene that you would be viewing on a stereograph. And I can't tell in this one, and maybe you guys can tell me what you think. I can't tell if he actually put a cherub and its sign, if he put it in this ice cave, or if he manipulated the photograph and then dropped this cutout piece in on the negative to make it hmm. what it is. I'm not, I'm not sure it's a real ice cave, to be honest with you. You don't uh, think so? What makes no, you, I think it's you a say that? Setup. Well, because the, I've, been, I've seen ice caves and they don't look like what this one looks like. Um, <laughs> they, they, this looks like it's got some water that's dripped down a, a, a surface. Um, mm -hmm. 
and I can't tell what it is behind it. I can't tell if it's rocks or something, but just the way the, sh the thing's shaped and uh, being able to focus on the, uh, the, the, the card kind of makes me feel like it's staged. Yeah. Yeah, staged, yeah. So do you think maybe, because he definitely took a photograph of it. Yeah. So do you think maybe it was like he p poured water in a cup and somehow it was cold enough outside that he could create almost like a micro scene? Or do you think yeah. he yeah. something like that. things? Like yeah. what do you, do, yeah, but not, you don't think this was actually happening in nature? No, I don't think that's a real ice cave, no. To the right of the, the cherubs and the sign are two icicles, yes, those two icicles look they're like they're very small and have been blown up. Yes, oh yes. Wow. Is that Looks what like you too symmetrical them? too. Yeah, the two too symmetrical. symmetrical. Yes. Yeah. Well, I don't have the answers to these speculations, but um, this era in photography <clears throat> it was when a lot of artists were manipulating photographs. They figured out how they can, you know, there's one photograph in our collection of a man, normal size, holding a grasshopper by its feet and the grasshopper is the same size as him yeah oh yeah so th this this <laughs> fooling and trickery um happened and people were expecting it but maybe you know this i don't think i don't think we're being tricked or are not meant to see the humor i think we're just kind of to reflect on this almost a blue valentine so to speak of cold and and it could be from any valentine you know you know who fill in the blank in your head of who you want that valentine to be from Oh, you, you are making me feel so lonesome for my darkroom. I used to have my own darkroom. I used to develop my own film and print my own photos. Would you manipulate your pictures and kind of create these these scenes or would you? Well, not to this extent, but yeah, I did, you know, I, I changed the lighting around and, you know, made sure. it much darker and, you know, oh God, I loved it. And my daughter, Holly. Our daughter, Holly, she, she used to help me. She was my assistant and she loved it too. How special. Well, I'm sure she has some of those pictures then that y'all developed together. You should try to dig them up if you know where they are or if your husband knows no. where they are. No, I, I know where mine are. I have, I have no idea where hers are. <laughs> <laughs> and but she probably thinks you know where they are. Moved, uh, probably not around at all. All right, we're gonna go to a next artwork. Oh. So this is the Diana. Diana. Have any of you been in the museum in the last, I think it went up in 2017. Have any of you been in the museum to see this sculpture in person? Oh, I saw it at the Bass. Martha, I'm glad you said that. I did oh. not pay her to say that. So <laughs> you saw her, but what, what color did you see her in? Gold. Gold. So this particular artwork, First, let me tie it to the love theme. This is of the goddess Diana. Does anyone know the story of Diana? Her brother said she was a huntress. Yes, she was the god of, uh, goddess of hunting. And to live her life as she wanted in the woods, um, she was to, to never marry, to be a virgin her whole life. Um, and that was kind of the trade-off so she could live the life she wanted. She had to give up something that some, you know, women might want. So anyway, one day she was out hunting and she was, ba or she was bathing actually before she was hunting. And she noticed the hunter Acteon saw her. And because of, her, of the deal, she was not allowed to be seen in the nude. And so she splashed her water onto Acteon the hunter and Acteon turned into a uh, dog, I believe. No, a deer, excuse me, a stag. And then his own dogs, hunting dogs, killed him. <gasps> so this is, we, my, the curator of this particular piece always calls it a frustrated love. Um, Acteon was excited to see her, but then punished for seeing her and eventually killed. So this sculpture is of of Diana, the goddess, naked, hunting in the woods. But what is she missing that we can kind of fill in in her hands? Bow and arrow. Bow and arrow, Bow and arrow. Yeah. 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 So this is the cement version. And this, uh, you can't really tell for scale. This is about um, 13 feet tall. Ooh. 
it's very high. The, the sculpture itself, I want to say, is maybe like seven or eight feet, but then on the podium and everything, it's very tall um, and very heavy. It's made, as you can see, of cement and plaster. So this particular, does anyone know the story of this, of how the Diana, this particular sculpture came to be? This is a very popular tabletop size sculpture that Augustus St. Gaudens created, this, this one. I'm sure you've seen versions of this at other museums across the country. This is kind of like um, other artworks we've seen. Any museum worth its weight in salt has a version of this. You could have bought it, bought it at Tiffany's in the day. Um, so this is the tabletop version. You might have it on, you know, a, a credenza or on your mantelpiece. This was much larger. Any guesses on what this might have been used for when it, at this size? Hmm. World's Fair. A World's Fair. That's a good guess. It was a weather vane on top of the Madison Square Garden, the original Madison Square Garden. Hmm. Wow. So the original version of Diana. Uh, that went on the building was 18 feet tall. Well, they quickly realized that this was way too heavy to balance and work functionally as a weather vane. She had like a, a draping um, cloth almost on her. It was too heavy. So they scaled it down to 13 feet. And it, and it was up on the Madison Square Garden for a while under electric lights. So in the, in the mid 1800s, what do you think the reaction was of a naked woman higher than the uh, Statue of Liberty under electric light? What do you think people thought? Scandalous. That's Scandalous. Right. Oh, it was the drama of the century, having this woman naked. And so many women claimed to be the model for this particular sculpture. Yeah. And, and we don't know who the model was. But it, in newspapers, it was interviews with who the model was and things like that. And it's not true. So this, for um, a few years, was up on Madison Square Garden. And then they tore the Madison Square Garden down. So everybody had a, a, an interest in what was going to happen to this Diana because she really was kind of a sensation in the city. And, and this, this topic of Diana, or this subject Diana, was typically an artist's way of, at that day and age, uh, creating a nude. It was a, you know, because the goddess was nude in nature, that was their way of getting away with depicting a nude. With, and so there, there was still a little scandal to that. Well, anyway, they took her down and she went to the New York City Museum um, and, and was in hiding, so to speak, was in create storage for years. Well, it, it turned out, and I'm going to play, a, a, it's a five minute video. It's going to talk about the conservation. We made it here at the museum and it's really interesting because I can't do justice to how beautifully conserved this was. It eventually came to the Eamon Carter and it came in two pieces. We had it in storage for two pieces and we didn't know we had it in storage. It was kind of one of those crates that just, it wasn't on any curator's radar. Um, but the Bass Hall one, a sculpture, this was the, the, the cast model that was used for the Bass Hall one. And this was the cast model that was used for the, this version in gold at the Met, Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. So we know she has two daughters, so to speak, um, that generated from this cast. And this exact cast lived in the backyard uh, when it when it was created, this cast was then put, um, it was in the museum for a while, but it was also in um, Stanford White's backyard. Stanford White was the architect of Madison Square Garden. He loved it so much on the top of, of MSG that he had it for his own backyard. And it lived for a while outside, not protected in the elements, the cement plaster cast for a very long time. And then it eventually came down and that's when it entered into museums and things like that. So I'm going to play this video. Um, it's five minutes, but it really is a wonderful way to hear how we then brought Diana back to life almost a hundred years later. Let me know if you can't hear it. Can you is hear the music? No. No. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna pull it up on um, YouTube then. Stay with me. Ah, uh, technology. I know, can't, can't live with it, can't live without it, huh? No. <laughs> you just quoted me. <laughs> I'm gonna have to leave before the video is done, Peggy. So I've got another call, but I just wanted to let you know and I'll see everybody tomorrow after when I leave. Uh, Jeopardy tomorrow, oh. Steve. All right. Well, I'll jeopardize myself. Okay. Yeah, learn all the facts. <laughs> hey, have a good day. Stay off the ice. <laughs> all right. Now I'm going to try to share screen again. Sorry, gang. Thanks for bearing with me. It's okay. <laughs> if we were perfect, it wouldn't be much fun. Okay. Can you hear it now? Yes, I think. No. No. No, I heard something, but then it went away. Can you hear it? No. Sounds like there's a little bit of music in the background, but not much. I don't hear any music. Well, shoot, gang. I don't know how to make the sound play. But, but there was text on it. Couldn't we just... Are you guys okay with with reading the caption? Yeah, sure. we love captions. Sure. Okay. That's how I live my life. <laughs> Our curator is the one narrating it. <laughs> She's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. It's my girl. Is she sharing her medal? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, my goodness. Split personality. shot.
Hmm. Very good. How long did that process take, Peggy? How can you not clap for her? Peggy's on mute. She's coming off mute as soon as she figures that out. <laughs> we love you, Peggy. It's okay. Are you going to have to go away and come back? No? Okay. Guys, I'm having a time. I am oh, really you're sorry. Back. Hey, you're, you're back. back. You're back. We love you, Peggy. So, how long did that take? Sorry, y'all. Thanks for being here. A few me. minutes. Um, Seconds. It, it was over the course of about a year. A year? Um, only because the conservationist, Adam, is based in Philadelphia. So oh. we would have to do things in sessions. But then uh, he came during the week of Thanksgiving and was only working on it for three full days. And then everything had to kind of set. And then he came back in December um, and then was able to put the rice paper and, and do the different, um, the blending in of her, her waste. So let me pull it back up. Uh, it's impeccable the work he did to uh, really fuse the top with the bottom. I mean, this is kind of a grainy image, but you cannot see a line in mm. person. You wouldn't be able to see the line either. Yeah. Um, so, and then getting the scans that were early on with the um, tunnel company. So all said and done, if you combine it together, it's probably about two or three weeks. It's actual work, but mm -hmm. things took time and right. um, had to set and the printing of the 3D pieces, things like that. So it was just stuff had to be done in chunks. And so we know um, in that video, and it was the curator, Maggie, the woman um, that was with the kind of red hair that was sitting um, with the image or, you know, with the sculpture and different images. She, we found that image of um, this sculpture in Stanford White's garden. So we know that one, at that point in time, she never had a bow and arrow. For a long time, we had a question, did this come with a bow and arrow and we just lost it over time? We, as far as we know, the second, or as long as Stanford White had it, there was never a bow and arrow. So almost since its creation, there was mm. never one actually included. And two, we know that they, he didn't paint it any color. It wasn't gold, it wasn't gold um, gild or you know, gold Leaf. leafing on top. It was always the cement color. So that finding that image of the um, sculpture in his garden was really answered a lot of our historical questions on <coughs> what the original looked like. So we tried in the, um, you can see the base of the podium. We tried to create a podium that looked very similar to what was in Stanford White's garden. That is not real, that's all um, wood. And, um, and then he did not have her uh, restored in a way that would have had any color. And when they did different testing of the filaments and chips and everything, there was never an indication that there was a, a, a color on it mm. as well. It reminds me of that poem, I shot an arrow into the air, it landed, I know not where. Yeah. Yeah. We have no idea yeah, where this yeah. arrow would have gone. You could change it and say, she shot an arrow into the air, it landed, I know not where, or she knows not where, she knew not where, or whatever. And, and the curator, her name is Maggie, that kind of rediscovered Diana down in the basement, was an Olympic archer. So she has a very uh, keen affection to this this oh, how wonderful. Hmm. Yeah. Reunion. All right, well, we're moving along. We'll do uh, one more artwork. I, I, I'll show, we have a couple more images, but we can kind of talk about this one more specifically. So this is by an artist named Ben Sean. And we've talked about, he did this with um, Tamarind. Tamarind was, does anyone remember what Tamarind was? It's a fruit. 
Tamarind so, was a it's in a spice. Oh, go ahead, Janine. Spice. No, never mind. It was a spice is what I thought it was. <laughs> Turmeric, I think, is what you might be thinking uh, of. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I know where turmeric is known for being a creative kind of spice, but he did not, that spice did not teach these artists. So tamarind is a, um, is a school, is a studio, studio is a better word, that originally um, was in LA and then after 10 in the 1960s and then in 1971, it moved to the University of Arizona and it is a lithography uh, studio. And the way that this studio worked, and it's still to this day, uh, is that artists who were known for creating artwork in typically paint, painters, but sculptors as well, would be invited to come for a six week stay at this studio and learn the craft of, the, of lithography. And at this time in the, in the 1960s, the United States was really trying it had been for a while, but now was really trying to elevate lithography as a fine art, um, even though it was a work on paper. So they were trying to create um, this environment of even artists of the upper echelon are creating artwork, are exploring their creativity in this very, very old uh, methodology, but now bringing a freshness to it. So Ben Sean, and um, the, I'm gonna show you three, art, two other artworks, Ben Sean, this artwork by Clinton Adams, and then this artwork by James Strom, I think Botton is how you say his name. They were all done at the lithography school at, the, at Tamarin in that studio, but they were all well-known painters. So they were trying to translate their subject matter, their, their themes into a very different medium. Then Sean was, had his, uh, his tenure, not tenure, his stint um, in 1968, and he died in 1969. While when he was in the prime of his career, he was really well-known um, artist. While he was creating, uh, he had he was an immigrant from Lithuania, and then created a name for himself. He initially started in lithography, then went to painting. He dabbled in other things like photography, um, but by the time he was making this in 1968, he was no longer doing the social realism that really made him famous. He was creating more from his emotional um, state at that point. So can you, what do you see here that you might relate to, not relate to, like, don't like? The, the other person, I guess that must be the female. She reminds me of somebody who has cancer and lost her hair. Oh, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we don't, so, Ben Sean was married to a woman named Tilly. We don't know if this is a portrait or just a depiction of, of a warm embrace. Before I saw the title, to me, it looked like a, like a child, but not a child, a grown up child hugging a parent for that same reason, the hair was kind of thinning and missing. And then I saw the title as making memories of or memories of making love, which I was like, okay, then this is not a father, <laughs> son, daughter, oh, scene, it looked, whatever. It looked like a baby to me until I saw the size of the other hands. Yeah. <laughs> yes, baby. Yes, the hair is what's really kind of throwing it off, I feel. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I like Yetta's interpretation. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. how hair looks when it comes back. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know my experience. Ugh. Ooh. Yeah, so it's, yeah. he was creating these artworks at this time in his life that were very graphic that allowed some viewers to kind of put themselves in that scene. This is a very relatable type of embrace for most people. And so Yetta, you did exactly what he was hoping. You kind of saw yourself in that embrace. You were able to, you know, see parts of you, even though we don't know who these people are. Mm -hmm. But this is a very tender scene. It's, I don't know if and when this has ever been on view in our, on the walls in our museum, um, but it's one of, these art, one of these artworks that everybody has in their museum as well. And, and you can actually, this artwork and this artwork are still on auction in the marketplace right now. So you can 
go to different auction houses and be able to buy um, these prints. They're still in circulation. So these are the other two. This is another artist that um, was at the Tamarind uh, uh, studio. This particular man was actually the um, director of the Tamarind studio. He was a professor. So he, when he was in LA, he was running it. And then he took a professorial job at the University of Arizona and then was still able to be the director of this um, studio. So he um, had a lot of experience with lithography, but he was also a painter as well. And so this one is, the title is Astarte. Does anyone know who Astarte is? For all you mythology yeah. buffs, this is a, a Hebrew or Egyptian God of love and sexuality. So we see the, the heart. Um, and there's not much written about what the meaning of this artwork is, but I think it's very beautiful. It's very simple. Does anyone like this one or not care for it or? Mm. Nah. Yeah, yeah. It's just okay. Yeah. And then this like is body the, parts. It kind of, yeah, it does look like body parts. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not, and it's not like the chambers of the heart either. There's not enough chambers, so there it, it's very. It looks like body a, part of desk. A lap picture. A lap picture. Yeah. Someone reclining in their beach chair, taking pictures of their knees, you know. It's oh, yeah, it looks, you know, it looks to me like a woman in a strapless bra and a low cut dress, but it's got hair on her chest. <laughs> uh, that, that, that is probably the genitalia. That's <laughs> yeah. my yeah. And yeah. taking That's from what you below and up. Yep. Yeah, yeah. All yeah, right. so. Yeah. Seemingly innocuous upon closer review. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the last one I have. And um, this particular artist, it was again, known for being a painter, but he was um, invited to come to Tamarind for a stint. And, um, and was again, he was a graphic artist in general. So his art still remained very graphic when he went to um, this type of medium. But can anyone guess where he might have studied art before he uh, came to the Tamarin studio? New York. Close. Well, he wasn't, I don't actually think he was from New York. He might have stayed there for a little bit. I don't think he went to school. He ended up being a professor. So he was, I'm sure, involved in the New York circles of art. He was um, in Rome, Italy on a Guggenheim scholarship for a while. Oh. So you can't go to Rome without seeing a crucifix or two. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that that trip had a lasting impression on him. Is this the how do we feel about this art? This is kind of different than stuff we've been viewing. What do you think about this one? Um, I, I've never seen the, uh, the fabric looks like on the arm of the cross there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand so that. that. Like fabric to you? It's what it looks like to me. What is it? Yeah. What's what do thing? other people see? Um, maybe a hand. A hand. Oh, yeah, I can't. I can't tell. I'm with Dusty. I like think it's fabric. Fabric. Yeah. It looks like a robe or something. A cover. It looks like a torso when you enlarge it. <laughs> huh. Yeah, I it can looks, see that. That's, yeah. And I, and I, to me, the the woman laying across the bottom and the crucifix seem very disjointed. But because love is written on the top, you're seeing maybe two very different types of love, more of yeah. a a selfless yeah. love and versus more of maybe a, a lustful love. I don't yeah. know. Maybe, does yes. anyone kind of get that feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Eros and agape. To me, that thing on the cross looks like a, a naked body draped over. Yes, I see mm -hmm. that. Huh? I, that's, yeah, good point. Yeah, I can see that too. Wow. That's see, this is why I love our conversations. Everyone brings different points of view to make you so kind of see it in a different angle. <laughs> well, as we know, Valentine's is this weekend, so I wish nothing but love for all of you. Thank and you. 
Thank you. Next week, next week we're doing Black History. Um, and then Gail had, I guess Gail shared my email address with y'all. And if you have any interesting themes, you can tell me here or you can shoot me an email. I got Martha's today. And Martha, you had some great themes. Unfortunately, we're an American art museum. So I can't hit you with your, your um, Van Gogh or your Louvre. We don't, we don't have them in our holdings, but, <laughs> but do you have there's any dinosaurs? a lot of other ones I can help you with. <laughs> okay. And look up my boyfriend that used to be a painter. <laughs> Oh, ooh, I didn't realize there was a love connection there. I just saw there is a love friend. connection. Yes. Well, I will look him up for sure and see if we have anything in our collection. But if you guys have any themes, I know we have Black History next month, and then um, the following week we have Abstract because that was something Janine said she was interested in seeing. So oh, that Abstract will be coming down the pipe. But any other themes, I am open and ready. It makes it easier for me to make sure I'm talking about things you guys are interested in. Do you Karen. have any impressionistic? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's always interesting, Peggy. Yes, it is. I'm, I'm glad you guys aren't sick of me yet. <laughs> Sherry right, well, just said Southern you. Art. I just, yes, I just made a note. Southern Art, we've got plenty of that. Um, don't you worry. We'll throw it at you. Um, all right. But yeah, if things hit you over the weekend or over the next couple of weeks, you know where to find me. So. In the meantime, Do you have enjoy anything? Valentine's Day. Stay warm, and I will see you all next week. Stay healthy. Uh, Good night. Night. Good night. Happy Valentine's Stay healthy. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes, wow. That's pretty impressive, I think. Yeah. And I didn't hear either child. Oh, no. Uh. Um, we have the uh, Fifth Street Cafe starting at 1115, so... When we get through with um, with this part, we'll just roll right into it, and I'll stop okay. recording. Okay. Uh, tomorrow we are playing Jeopardy, <coughs> and I have written two Jeopardy games, and I hope they're not too elementary, but they're all about love. And some of them will challenge you, and some of them you're going to say, "Why did she put that in there?" <laughs> <laughs> so this ought to be kind of fun. Well, good. I'm I look forward to it, Martha. Tomorrow. Thank you. Yeah.